fucking horny at 12 o'clock. Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars. I'm here today to bring you my review for the 2024 Ghostbusters sequel, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. The film is co-written and directed by Gil Canan and it stars Paul Rudd, Carrie Coon, McKenna Grace, Phil Wolfhard, uh, Kumjai Nanjani, Patton Oswald, and we also have the reappearance from the classics, Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Ernie Hudson, as well as Annie Potts and William Atherton. Right, this time round, after Ghostbusters Afterlife, the Ghostbusters um, are now uh, set up and established in New York. And what I mean by that is um, the Spenglers. They are living in the firehouse. They are essentially the new Ghostbusters. Um, and after an incident early in the film where some damage is caused, uh, McKenna Grace's character, Phoebe, is benched because she's underaged, uh, which distresses her greatly if you like then a strange artifact is taken to um dan Aykroyd's ray um and this artifact they discover is in actual fact the key to unlocking an ancient frozen terror once unlocked a frozen uh, hell descends over new york and it is up to the new and old ghostbusters to try and save the world right what are my thoughts on Fro uh, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire? Well, the first thing I want to say is, obviously, I'm a huge fan of Ghostbusters. I grew up on the films. I went to the cinemas to see the original uh, back in 84. Um, I've always been a fan of the series. Um, apart from, obviously, the 2016 is it reboot, which is terrible. Beyond that, I was delighted when they brought it back with Ghostbusters Afterlife. Um, I think... Um, there's been a little bit more discontent towards that film the longer it's been out, but I still maintain it was a lovely refresh for the franchise, um, and it kind of hit the highs at times. So I've been really looking forward to this one, you know, mainly because it it's set back in New York where we are all used to the Ghostbusters operating. Um, we've got a new credible villain this time round. Um, you know, the last. Um, you know, two main Ghostbusters ones, like the original Ghostbusters and the Ghostbusters Afterlife, we were dealing with Gozer and stuff again. So Afterlife kind of felt like a bit of a rehash of the first one in some ways. Um, so we had like a different spin here, a different enemy, a, a different villain. Um, and I really liked that approach here. Um, I think, I suspect there are some people going to have problems with the pacing of this film. I'm not one of them. I like reasonably slow-paced films if it's there for a reason. And I do think, well, I do think it does say it makes some missteps here. There's almost too many characters in the film. But it does spend quite a bit of time like establishing some of the characters and the relationships and the new dynamics of the film here and there and introducing new characters um, into the film. And I think that, I think it does it reasonably successfully. Um, and, you know, the the setup for the climax of the film, I think, is handled very well. Um, and you could argue it does follow, you know, in a lot of ways, quite a similar blueprint to especially the original. Um, but it kind of, you know, it's a different investigation. It's a different paranormal investigation. Um, and it also, I, I think, refreshes the franchise because yes okay you've got the spenglers living in the firehouse and they are the new ghostbusters but you've also got um, ernie hudson's uh, winston who is like the financier now he's kind of setting up and planning for the future he's got like a, a research lab going he's building a new storage containment unit for the ghosts um so he's thinking of the future too so you kind of you've got the old and the new and it's all it all comes together quite well Another thing I quite liked about this film was the fact that, in, obviously in Afterlife, the film focused mainly on the Spengler family and Paul Rudd's character. 
Um, and even though they are front and centre in this film, once again, there are significantly larger roles this time around, especially for Dan Aykroyd and Ernie Hudson. Um, and you could argue that Bill Murray's appearance is little more than a cameo, maybe. He turns up about in the middle of the film, um, and then he turns up for the conclusion of the film. Um, and it, it, it was wonderful to see. I, I probably would have liked to have seen Sigourney Weaver again, but, you know, that's just me. Um, and I, I think all the um, legacy Ghostbusters, if you want to call them that, have, you know, significant roles in this film, and I thought that was great. Um, but it also felt comfortable that they weren't necessarily Ghostbusters anymore. They were more like researchers, certainly... Um, Ray was, uh, but they were quite prepared to kind of, you know, zip on the uniform as and when it was required, and I thought that was really, really cool. Um, a concern for me is if they're going to move forward with this franchise, is who's going to front it? And what I mean by that is I don't have a problem with any of the Spengler characters, you know, Phoebe um, and Gary, especially Paul Rudd and McKenna Grace, but Finn Wolfhard, I just don't feel he's got the charisma, really, for this franchise. I don't know. He just doesn't seem to fit, and neither does Carrie Coon, really, you could argue, in a lot of ways. Um, so I, I think it doesn't feel rooted now after two films with strong characters because, you know, Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd and Ernie Hudson can't continue with this franchise. So they, I think they've got to really have a rethink about what they're going to do, really, in regards to carrying the franchise going forward. I could be wrong. You know, they might make another one with the same cast and, you know, they they really have significantly been improved. Um, but it, I don't know. It just, it just feels like there's something missing in regards to um, characters to anchor the franchise going forward. Um, but I thought the pacing here was... Exactly how I liked it. Um, there was great effects here and there. We, we get to see um, old, familiar ghosts that we've seen before. Some people will probably be complaining about you know, too much fan service, but come on. Um, if we can't have fan service in movies like this, you know, what is the point? You know, I don't think they're doing it just for fan service sake. I think, you know, they are balancing the new with the old and kind of trying to please everybody and i think they got the balance just right if i'm being honest i thought this was a fun entertaining um movie i got there was a few giggles here as there as you would expect in a ghostbusters film um a genuine credible threat in the, in the villain and um i would imagine well i'm i'm hesitant to say it was frightening but I would imagine if you took a youngster to see this, there would be moments in this film where they would start, they would feel fear. Um, and I remember that from the first Ghostbusters. I was only 12, I think I was, 11 or 12. Um, and I remember feeling fear watching that film. Um, so I, obviously I don't think it's scary now, and I don't think this film is scary, but I think for the right audience member, it would probably be a good introduction to like how to be scared at movies because i think it finds that balance quite nicely and quite easily um i can see that this is getting mixed reviews uh part of me can understand that um and part of me can't i i think this is a fine ghostbuster sequel um a credible follow-on from afterlife um lots of fun lots of ghosts lots of ghost busting um and i had a good time watching it not gonna lie i thought this was a pretty good film um i'm looking i'm hoping it makes money because i'm looking forward to more uh, and seeing how they're going to move the franchise franchise forward following this so yeah i think if you're a fan of ghostbusters you're going to enjoy this one uh, if you enjoy ghostbusters afterlife and you're not really sure you didn't really watch the earlier ghostbusters i think you're probably going to enjoy this one um i had a fun time at the cinema and the people i were there with did as well so yeah thanks for watching guys i hope you enjoyed checking out this review i will of course be back with plenty more reviews and content on the channel very very soon